faith and my burden that I have to keep order during an election. This has been a remarkably simple job today. I don't know whether it was the foul weather the last couple of days or just your but it's time for a decent election. I don't know which, but it's been very quiet. No tumult or riot whatsoever, and I appreciate it greatly. Now, we have been uh, keeping this election going all day. This is the last of it. I extended out a little bit for the dinner for the uh, dinner respite in that you might give uh, an opportunity for those that have not come to vote time to get here. I will say it now. Voting is no right. I know that people are going back and forth on the terminologies of it, but if you are obligated under law to do a thing and you have no choice in it, that completely nullifies the philosophical notion of a right, as far as I'm concerned. I will remind you that if you have the franchise and you are found guilty of willfully absenting yourself from an election, you will be criminally prosecuted. If found guilty of said charge, you can be fined up to one quarter of your annual tax levy. So pay all your taxes that year, then add another 25% for missing an election. Now, I will also remind you the legal obligation in Virginia has not changed much since our independency was declared two years ago. All three white men above the age of 21 non-Catholic Christians who own a minimum of 500 acres of unimproved land or 100 acres of improved land. Oh, I'm sorry, forgive me, forgive me. I was calling out my own obligation. 100 acres of unimproved land, 50 acres of improved. If you have a lot in town, you own a business, you have been resident in this place, all of those things give you the obligation of attending the election. Now, before we get this business started up again, there has been some small talk, um, and I realize the election is almost over. Mr. Nicholas and Mr. Everard have been, uh, some have not un fully understood their philosophical opinions on the business of representative government, especially since the great change in our own government two years ago. So, if it please you, I would have you gentlemen maybe voice a little bit of your opinion on the philosophy of Sir, I would object to that. I would agree with that. No speeches. Speeches are illegal, as we know. And beyond that, how are you going to give those who have not voted the privilege of listening to these two men talk? You know that that is going to influence how people will vote. That's true. Well, the other people who haven't cast their ballot are going to know what these Well, they should already know. They should be able to vote. All right. Widow Whitaker, you are absolutely correct. Widow Whitaker, you are absolutely correct. It is illegal for candidates to make elect or rather make speeches during the course of an election. Almost as illegal as making promises. <laughs> well, promises during an election are tantamount to buying a vote. Yes? That's why it's illegal. That's why under ordinary circumstances, any candidate who is making promises or speeches can be completely disqualified from the election. And, and that's a good, that is a good policy. Next thing you know, we'd end up 